Okay, welcome to Three Dudes in a Dock, out of the basement welcome. and into Christian's apartment. Yeah. <laughs> Live on locale. In the clock tower. Yeah. Nice. From the cave. <laughs> yeah, so uh, a little bit of uh, war on democracy this week. Whew. A little bit. Yeah. It's a, it's a crazy oh one. Goodness. This so, was the last historical veil for me. Yeah. Like, essentially, like the the last... 350, 400 years, it was the last black curtain to be pulled off the mystery box. Right. Because I didn't learn about this at all in school. Yeah, okay. I knew a little bit, uh, but not quite to the extent that uh, that this doc showed. Yeah. Um, mm-hmm. But, uh, yeah, so we watched, literally it was called The War on Democracy. Yeah. By... Uh, oh. John Pilger. John Pilger. That's I true. think that's how you say his name. I, I've never heard his name said. I believe so. you're right. Yeah. I think it's Pilger. Yeah. He's yeah. an Australian so, journalist and, and the documentarian. And it's about the muddlings of the great America <laughs> in South America. Yeah. So essentially it's about U.S. kind of exerting their force on Latin America. Yeah, and, man. And... Making, making them basically bend to their will, right? Yeah. Like, they don't really talk about this in this documentary, but it's kind of like pre what this documentary is talking about. But like Banana Republics and how, like, do you know what that shit is? No. It's just basically of, like, American companies going down to South America and being like, all right, Tyler, you're going to be the president of what the fuck ever country. Yeah. And, like, you're going to supply us with bananas. And then, so they they kind of mentioned that with uh, I think it was Guatemala. Right? Yeah, yeah, yeah. So I guess they do mention it. Okay, yeah. sorry, but yeah. So that's crazy. And then also, that's nuts. That that's a clothing store now. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was my first thought. Yeah. Like when Mitch and I watched this together uh, a handful of days ago, and I was I was like, hey, Banana Republics, that's like that's a political yeah. yeah. Um, it's immense clothes. Like, imagine you're like, dude, I got my jeans at Genocide. It's the <laughs> sickest. They make the best jeans. <laughs> uh, yeah. Yeah. So it's crazy. It was like, I kind of knew about that, but then it was like, oh, yeah, I guess it would make sense that they just kind of prolonged that or just tried tactics in South America that right. they're like, oh, we're going to go try this in the Middle East. Yeah. Which is crazy because they're like, guys, it didn't work here. Why the fuck would you think it's going to work there? Yeah, for sure. Like, uh, well, so did they start with the Middle East and then go to Latin America or no. vice versa? Oh, no, because like Desert Storm was 92. Oh, yeah. Well, like, then in that case, well, I mean, but, like, I was thinking that's kind of, that's super vague because how far back do you want to go? Yeah. Like, uh, yeah. What incident are we really talking Cause about? Because they've always, because, they've been in, like, with the Banana Republic shit, like, yeah. that was like 18 something. So it was kind of like they were, testing out what they sure, were able yeah. to do because they're like oh south america like these countries are right there yeah and then they're like oh fuck now that we got planes that we can get to places like let's fucking go here now yeah it was empire building yeah then. oh for sure now it's just like the futile attempt at empire maintaining yeah, yeah. Well, and it's like some of the shit that uh like the interviewees that they had who you know see absolutely Dick all wrong with uh, what oh, they're doing. Yeah, yeah, crazy. yeah. With the, like, it's just foreign policy. Yeah. You're like, wait, what? It's like, national, yeah. national security. National insurance. security. Yeah. yeah. Insurance. Oh my god. Mm-hmm. Yeah. There was one guy on there. He was from the CIA, Philip Ag. Yeah. And uh, he he was remarking that back then they didn't really think much of democracy, and it certainly didn't get in the way of what the CIA wanted to accomplish on right. the behalf of money and uh, there's no democracy now that he can see today and he started to say something else at the very last couple of frames of that uh, cut or that scene in the doc and I really want to know what the rest of that interview was like because he obviously worked in the CIA I think it was for like almost 10 years yeah yeah he would have seen shit for sure yeah and like the height of like classic CIA or meddling <laughs> right yeah in South America not not yeah. foreign yeah. meddling en masse because they've done far worse and far more in other parts of the world. Sure. But mm-hmm. yeah, the rest of that interview is probably awesome because he just tells it like it is in his own mind and he's yeah. seen some shit. So like at one point he says, you know, like, well, and the interviewer, so John Pilger kind of uh, 
you know, states a fact that, you know, tens of thousands of people, he's like, no, no, you can count maybe 200. Yeah. And he's like, really? 200? Like, there's thousands of names on this, like, yeah. like yeah. Uh, Literally memorial seen, wall. Yeah. yeah, yeah. That wasn't the same CIA no. guy? That, that okay. was that toady little fella? No, yes. his name wasn't toady. He looks like a toad. So but, that's the guy I was thinking about. Yeah, that guy yeah. was gnarly, yeah. man. He's yeah. like, whatever. Like, that was, like, the national security. Yeah, like, that's why like, we did it. Yeah. It's in, the, you know, it was... You know, we have to protect our own interests because we're yeah. protecting everyone else. Like, that's a really fucked up mindset. Yeah. yeah. And, like, these people absolutely cannot damage your empire as America, or even just even the country, not yeah. even other countries. Yeah. Well, possibly other countries, actually, now that I think about it, because part of what they were talking about was that these revolts into democracy <laughs> or even just more social reform, like uh, collecting a bit more of their uh, oil sales that was that was like 95 percent of right yeah their export dollars as well as the problems that have arisen there um <laughs> not really the problems but like that's why america has created problems there sure they've really yeah disastrously affected that country but in the beginning i think it uh it all yeah i kind of fucking forgot where i was <laughs> going with that god damn it it's it's pretty interesting, uh, like those, especially South American countries, where it seems like they're not like harboring terrorists or like doing fucked up shit. It was right. like they just want like, hey, you're taking like our resources. Like we just want a percentage of that. Yeah, and like shut the fuck up. So I don't know if you've seen the uh, uh, series Jack uh, Jack Ryan. It's like based on the Tom Clancy novels. No. no. Um, so basically, isn't that uh, the guy from The Office? Yeah, yeah, John Krasinski. Is that why you wore that shirt? No, it's, it's not. He wanted to talk about <laughs> him today. <laughs> yeah, um, shit. But uh, so basically, it's it's all CIA uh, operative sh- uh, stuff. That's yep. what Tom Clancy wrote about. Yeah. Um, but in the second season, so first season's all I think Middle East. Okay. Second season, uh, it's basically all focused on Venezuela. Oh. And. He goes out and he, he's doing a talk in front of a like a Harvard uh, politics class where he said, asked the whole class, what's the the for, foremost uh, country that is the um, what's the word I'm trying to think of uh, threat to to U.S. Mm-hmm. and everyone's like, oh, it's China, it's Iran, it's it's all, and he's like, no, it's Venezuela. Okay, and nothing to do with. Like on their own part, yeah. But they have so much oil uh, that they're ripe for corruption. Uh, you know, so say Russia comes in and yeah, you know, I was gonna say that. Yeah, too, yeah. It starts like yeah. Okay, we need these people to do what we want. Mm-hmm. There's so much money there. Mm-hmm. Like right now, the Venezuelan economy is shit, and their paper is not worth as much as a yeah. piece of toilet paper. Yeah. Um, but that's like if foreign influences come in and and. You know, help them out and get them going, and they're kind of emboldened to uh, those foreign assets. Yeah. That it, it reminded me. Um, but when you mentioned those countries are really resource rich, yeah, and their their threats, they're also they, this is what they were talking about that their threats to other countries being able to reform themselves, yeah, and mm-hmm. that they're going to set a good example for independence. Sure. And that's obviously threatening because they have resources. So yeah. then mm-hmm. they become an actual um, partner. And yeah. you don't want them to be a partner. Then they become Canada. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, and we like should Canada's, have invaded you sons of bitches long ago. <laughs> yeah, because like, it, like the land mass might be deceiving people with Canada sure. because we don't have that big of a population. Yeah. And Venezuela is the opposite. It has a huge population, but not that much land mass. I yeah. mean, comparatively to mm-hmm. sure. foreign powers like China, Russia, the States. The United States of America. Yeah. yeah. But they, they represent the ability to change yourself, and that obviously can't happen. And yeah. They, they represent change into less money in the economy and more money into people's well-being, which is fundamentally less money in your pocket. Yeah. Well, and so that's, that's crazy. Economists man. don't like that. What they talk about, like they want big American corporations with their fingers and all the cookie jars of those uh, Latin American countries, right? Yeah. It was the same as Cuba, basically, what Cuba boiled into and Fidel Castro took over. Yeah, um, yeah like uh, the mafia, they're running casinos there and like had 
big American business. Yeah. And then Fidel Castro said, nope, fuck this. Yeah. We're Cuba. We're independent. Get the fuck out. Yeah. Yeah. And uh, shut that down. Yeah, man. And uh, led to all kinds of tensions there. All kinds of tensions. Yeah. They all, like the U.S. tried to kill them. Like I forget how many times, yeah. but it's like <laughs> laugh. It, it's times. like uh, like a Bugs Bunny skit where you're like, you, what? Like you tried this many times and tried this much wild shit. I think the Ministry of Silly Walks had something to do with that. He's just walking around all goofy and shit. No one can get a bead on him. <laughs> all the bullets are missing. Yeah. And then he birthed the Canadian Prime Minister. <laughs> oh, we'll, we'll, leave, we'll, yes. we'll leave that for true. we'll leave that for another podcast. Oh, no, we should do um, it. I was talking about that with someone recently. Yeah. It was it was fantastic. They didn't really ever have they never heard of that yeah. theory before. Theory. They've never heard of that fact. Yeah. yeah. But uh, he he was almost unwilling to accept it. <laughs> That's um, funny. But yeah, like so I think one line from I, I don't know if it was Nixon or Reagan or one of those I think it was Nixon. Yeah. When he says, you know, you guys are better off, your life is better off if you're drinking coke. It's it was like a fucking coke commercial yeah. in a like presidential press just, conference. <clears throat> yeah, the only thing he was lacking was the holding a can. Yeah. It wasn't Nixon too when he had the quote where he's like no one gives a shit about these people yeah. or like that was definitely Nixon. Yeah. Fuck yeah. South America. <laughs> I think I think he was vice president when he when he said that. Yeah. Yeah. I think yeah. the the quote about they should uh, like how dare you sit forty miles off our coast and have a different kind of government like don't you want to drink coke every day I think yeah. that was uh, yeah. Jose Serrano he was uh, <coughs> excuse me he was um, a U.S. representative in uh, I think it was Colombia yeah Jesus and uh, oh no I guess it would have been it would have been Cuba but okay. no fuck it was Puerto Rico. He was the U.S. Uh, oh. representative from Puerto Rico. Yeah. And Puerto that's what Rico. he was That's what he was quoted in saying. Oh. In the doc, at least, that's what he was. Yeah. Was Which is pretty much a state, right? They're like kind of like. Puerto Rico is like one of those like pseudo states. Yeah. Yeah. It's like a, an American owned territory. That yeah. They kind of. Unincorporated. F- yeah. Forget about it all the time. Like Guam. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Absolutely on purpose. Yeah. yeah. Um, But yeah, it's, it is. Pretty crazy of like trying to like back the, like I Amer- America's I <clears throat> idealism of like just imperialism and like oh no this like this is a cool thing to stand behind like this is the just right thing to stand behind and it was like this is just another story of like man this is so fucked up well and the fact that there was so much evidence that they were behind most of the coups oh, yeah I was just gonna say and then that they're like. No, we yeah we, we never talked to them. Yeah, like there's legit paper of like yeah. evidence of like no make this happen so you yeah. get in and like it's gonna be a dictatorship and like did you know that it would happen? They're like nope nope. Are you guys forgetting <laughs> the slogan for this movie? No, I don't know the slogan. I it's not true until it's officially denied. Oh, oh, yeah. Right? Yeah. That's the old um what the fuck? Oh, God damn it! I forget the quote of. I forget it. That CIA yeah. um. Speaker who said that, like, I cannot confirm nor yeah, deny that. Yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. yeah, yeah Same yeah. kind of fucking U.S. soft yeah. talk bullshit. <sighs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah, like, there's so much uh, evidence that the U.S. was behind most of these coups. Yeah. And like, then literal like, paperwork. I think, trails. like, all of yeah. them, wasn't it? Mm. Pro- yeah. <laughs> yeah. And Australian and there's like, uh, journalists no. found. That's ridiculous. Nope. Yeah. yeah. They just keep denying yeah. it. Yeah. We, we had that experience uh, a couple of days ago. Mitch and I, we were talking about... Trump at an interview that he just did and uh, in the course of that it's like press conference rather maybe not quite an interview but someone uh, had the chance to ask a question that they've been waiting for so long to ask and they just bluntly asked Trump yeah, like, why four do, years why do you lie so much oh yeah he was like who who lies he's yeah. like you he's like what? there was like this major pause yeah it's just I saw it. Next question. (laughs) Like, hey, uh, Tyler, what was your question? Like, what? Are you kidding me? (laughs) Yeah. You're being filmed all the time, buddy. Yeah, I think it was something like, uh, can you tell the American people why you've lied so much over the last three and a half years? Uh, He's like, who? Yeah. You? What? Yeah. And then, then it's the next question. <laughs> totally you know, he probably at the end of that was like, oh, man, we handled that so good. Like, yeah. fuck yeah. <laughs> we got times. him. And so, yeah, then, that's just their policy of, like, hey, you did this in South America. Yeah. Like, what? Who did? Well, like, so, America. No. Yeah. And no, we're talking no. about Trump. That brings up, like, 
something I've been thinking about since watching this. Like, it kind of mirrors what's happening in the States right now. Like, there's accusations of Russia, like, putting their guy in. It's not a coup, Mm -hmm. but they want to install the guy that they want for their interests. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Right? It's an illusory democracy. Yeah. She's a bully, man, because the bully is like, oh, it's cool when I bully, but, like, if there's an, this foreign bully that comes and fucks with us, like, wait, 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 wait. It's also a going bit on of, here? like, you're witnessing some dominoes fall, but if you could just poke it just a bit and make them fall just that much faster, you would definitely do that if you wanted to see the dominoes fall. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And Russia's just sitting back. They're not exactly minding their own business, but this was a ripe opportunity for them to just poke a little bit, just a little digital poke of two or three million people. And they they tipped the domino in the right direction. Well, they tipped it in a favorable direction for them. Right. And then maybe not the right one, because the right one is to just kill everyone in the States and assume the territory. Yeah. But, but that can't happen. But that only it, happens in Cuba. Yeah. But it's funny. Like it, it just kind of, uh, it just kind of, there's like a, I don't know if it, allegory is the right word or it's like a it just seems so connected that oh yeah man states did this to latin america it's like a pattern yeah mm-hmm. so Behavior. for so long mm-hmm. and then it's kind of happening in the states right now like there's, yeah. there's someone yeah. else who's ah you know it's gonna benefit us if if we have someone on the inside there yeah let's uh let's yeah. work on this yeah well this is kind of what's still going on in venezuela there's yeah. this uh dispute over who's the current leader right Mm -hmm. it's either uh nicolo maduro or juan guarno yeah i was looking at that this morning and i I hope i said their names right but um they're not listening so it's okay that's true we should send it to them we should need to reach out and be like viva venezuela viva venezuela yeah that's all they would say they'd be like oh western media viva venezuela (laughs) (laughs) liberty so liberty or die do you guys watch parks and rec Somewhat, yeah. I've seen a few episodes. There, the episode where, like, the guys come from uh, uh, South America. They're from Venezuela, right? I've never seen it. Oh. Sure. So there's an episode where uh, Fred Armisen, he's like, there's, like, a convoy coming from South America. And I think it was Venezuela. Okay. Uh, and they're, they're going to be, like, twin cities with uh, the city that Parks and Rec takes place in. Yeah, okay. And they come in, they're just, like, super condescending. Like, there's, like... <laughs> oh, this is, this is shit. We have like beautiful stuff. Like, <laughs> and they're, yeah, they're just like That's super uh, condescending, super uppity. <laughs> That's <laughs> awesome. Yeah. I wish that could happen. Well, from that doc, it does seem like Venezuela at the time when it was bumping seemed pretty sweet. Yeah. But I mean, minus the favela things of like the people living on the mountains. The barrios. Yeah. And like, okay, what well, was it like wind resistant houses or like wind? Oh. Uh, yeah. It was um, something that Christian and I were like, wait, that's a weird way to describe a house. I think and like uh, wind free housing or s- free wind housing. Breeze hole. Breeze block. Fuck, it was breeze block. That's what breeze it was. Oh, yeah. Breeze block housing. Yes, and we got there. Giant windows. And Christian makes the point of like, uh, what happens when it rains? Yeah. I'm like, I just oh. assume you drop like tin sheets. Wood and it just like a, like, like a shutter almost. Yeah, just like until like awning. you're like shit. I need wood to cook the fire or like for the fire. So yeah. we had shutters at one point. Well, and that's like the one guy. <laughs> like he was uh, a priest and uh, a taxi driver. Yeah. Uh, in, oh. In Chile, I think. Uh, living in the child graveyard. Yeah. 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 On the top of the mountain, I th- uh, El El Paz. No, that El Paz is the uh, the capital El Alto. Al Alto, yeah. is the place that we're talking about. Yeah. yeah. And he was like, you know, no, this must have been Venezuela too. Uh, no, nah, it wasn't Venezuela. But he said, no, our country has so much oil mm-hmm. and I'm here still cooking my food on a, like a, a wood fire. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Like, and the just the views of some of the cities, of just the mountains and like just how beautiful it looks. Oh, yeah. You're like, fuck, man, this is such a nice, beautiful place, but it just is so... Like, just been well, so fucked. And Venezuela is so, like, oh. everything that the U.S. has tried to do has yeah. failed there because it's still, like, a super violent, right. super dangerous yeah. place. Like, yeah. there's kidnappings all the time. There's a, a major league ball player. His his family was kidnapped. Or, yeah. Or he yeah. was kidnapped. Yeah. Oh, man. Yeah. Uh, um, for a while. There's a director, too. Wait, um, for what? So he was released? Yeah. Someone paid the ransom. 
don't know if oh, it was wow. you just get kidnapped for money because like oh yeah. tyler's family has money so <laughs> well, we'll just, just kidnap them there is now a history of kidnappings in venezuela of important people yeah because a lot Hugo of us got like, kidnapped co- yeah like 48 hours yeah by the opposition which were backed by americans that was yeah. wild. And then he's like, oh, that was crazy. That was a crazy yeah. two days. Yeah, I thought I almost died. <laughs> yeah, unfortunately. It's just like a normal thing of like, oh, yeah, this is South American politics. Yeah. Unfortunately, Hugo Chavez is dead now. Yeah, 2013. He died of cancer. Yeah. Yeah. Which is not something that I'd like to take lightly or informally, but there have been reports of uh, certain Korea manufacturing versions of super cancers of just diluting, not diluting them concentrating them from patient to patient to patient until it kills you in like um, three weeks uh, R- russia only does that to people oh america only wouldn't russia. do that no of course to not. people why would they do that they would just buy the stuff why would they get the stuff from north korea that's crazy they would give the money to one organization who would go out and hire the third you're saying they have shell organizations russia, and then they'd hire another third party to this seems so it. plausible that, yeah, 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 you're right. That's yeah. probably what Cancer. they did. Zero but science. yeah, I have heard that too, that there are reports of people dying of chupacansars. Chupacansars. And no. they're like, wait, you're pretty young. It's the chupacansar. Um, the chupacabra. Sister to the chupacabra. I missed the last 15 minutes of <laughs> the, the documentary. Chupacabra? Um, Do they... South America rises up and they're all liberated now. It's all good. Do they talk about Panama no, at all? <laughs> <laughs> they, uh, they don't talk no. about Panama. Noriega? No, no. Um, which would be cool because a bit too far back in time, I think, ooh. for this doc. That was only like oh, the eighties. That, that was it. Yeah, yeah. That oh, was like I was thinking about like the formation of. Dude, Noriega no. was like homies with Escobar, yeah. so he was like in with all in, those guys. He was the leader in power in at Panama. The time in yeah, Panama. yeah. So in Panama, like basically, they went down and like to get him out of his house. Like the U.S. military just blasted Panama by Van Halen, <laughs> like super loud oh <laughs> yeah and just like on repeat i thought like, you meant like blasted panama with carpet bombs or something no, no, like, oh. they just like sat this aside song. so i spent uh panama. that's way worse yeah. <laughs> i spent a week in panama 2009 or something Did you like play that. the song walking around like no, a white asshole but the resort i was at was right beside one of noriega's house it's really all, it's all like broken down like yeah like, yeah it's yeah all abandoned still Wait, so it's still in Disarray. Yeah. Yeah. Wow. And like That's you can, so you can so walk rare. through it. There's like bullet holes Disarray. in the wall. What? Yeah. Did you walk around? Yeah. Oh, oh, That's yeah. so cool. Yeah, it was awesome. Is there any little coke residue around anywhere I, still? Not that I saw, but you didn't sniff it out. No. Just breathe deep, man. Yeah. But yeah. Oh, that like, was they, that's concrete dust. Some of they take body, tours through there, so I'm sure like, like hundreds and hundreds of people have gone through there. And I wonder Just how like long after running their fingers on the banister. I wonder how long after they did tours. Like yeah, like it, a day after, like hey, you want to check look, it out? It doesn't even look like a house anymore. It's just like it's just abandoned ruins. Oh yeah, does it look yeah. like basically a house fire five years after? Yeah, except nothing's burnt. But it's just oh, fucking yeah. massive. Like it's huge. Yeah, like it would have been like a crazy house. And there's an island just off of uh, uh, the beach that has Fuck a huge yeah. cross on it. Yeah. So like he put that there so we could oh. look out as. Uh, his window and gangster across, move yeah. but yeah panama was used to like Good launder ratings. launder all a lot of money like escobar's money I, it still is like and <laughs> yeah the whole panama paper thing that came out it, yeah right. yeah that's true yeah. well it's also a dummy government set up by the americans anyways yeah. like that was the formation of panama they went in and destroyed the place yeah and then they they literally split it in two with that stupid little channel yeah that's stupid channel. yeah that that's crazy to see though <laughs> in, that is in, in that, will, that will be cool, man. I can't even imagine the story I behind that's fucking pictures. nuts. Really? Yeah. Uh, I I used to like when I was there's there, a Ken's Burn doc on it. I believe it's Ken Burns. When I was there, I bought uh, two black and white pictures of like, like from like 1921 when it was being built, mm-hmm. and uh, like one was like them building, and another one was like a ship going through. Okay. And I I have no idea where they went. I lost them. I wanted to put them on a oh, plaque. Yeah, that'd be cool, and man. Them. Uh, yeah, I have no idea where they went. Just gotta go back. Yeah, that's a yeah, wild yeah. story. Yeah. yeah, we could technically drive there. Yeah, we could actually. Uh, no, you can't. Oh, I thought you could. No. Uh, My bad. I take it back. No, maybe maybe Panama you can, but there's like a, a section that's like just like super dense forest. It might be after Panama, between uh, Panama and like uh, South America. The Amazonian jungle. That makes more sense that it's after the Panama Canal, only because well, I had Panama in general because. 
they would have cleared that out to build the canal. Yeah. Sure. Yeah. Eradicate the mosquitoes. It's, it's between two countries. I think it might be between okay. Colombia and uh, and whatever's below Panama, whether it's... It might be Guatemala or Nicaragua. And I think those are in South America. Guatemala, 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 Guatemala. Is I, Panama on like the, the way North northern America? tip, as far as I know. Yeah. The northern tip. I'm going to have to look this up because... But, um, yeah, they... America really fucked around in South America. It's they have pretty, a history of doing uh, that kind of shit. Pretty crazy how... Structurally, yeah. how so they did that. It goes Costa Rica, Panama, and then Colombia, and there's a big, like, really, it's called the Darien National Park. Oh, okay. It's like a really oh. heavily forested area. Makes sense. That Who's National Park? Darien. He's some guy that went there. It might no, be. not literally, but no, like, literally. literally Who's national? Like, what country? Panama. Oh, Panama. okay. Yeah. Good. It might be Darien. I don't know. There's a Darien. There's Darien. Oh, what about already. Darien? Couldn't it be Darien? It's the backyard. Looks like a butt. Yeah, so all the trees look like asses. Panama borders Colombia. Cool. Nicaragua S- is in Costa Rica, or is in Central America. It's north of Costa Rica. Oh, yeah. Oh, okay. And Guatemala. Central so you were America. right. I was wrong. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Anyways, something. structurally, this documentary was really cool. Yeah. It's, uh, Fucking it man. kind of played out like a big PSA. I could see this being a commercial on YouTube nowadays. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. John Pilger just enters. There's a bit of footage at the beginning. You're like, oh, what the fuck is this? Yeah, and something then, like Hitchcock shit. Like, good evening. Yeah, and then he just walks on screen or that cuts to him and he's like, this film is about the destruction of political scenes in places that we all know and love, but we don't really know anything about or love them really all that much. And yeah. then cut to like uh, that low lying city, the first shot. <sighs> and it just, from there, so the story beautiful. Just so beautiful. Fucking nuts. So beautiful. Yeah, it's uh, it's something like I read a comment, uh, I don't know if it was on uh, Vimeo or, or somewhere, um, but it was like some someone said, this is something that like all like college history classes need to to watch. Yeah. Yeah, Christian and I were talking about that. They were like, man, that's crazy that in school you never really learn about this history. No, and, and I mean, like... Understandably, we don't because Canadian, but like Americans should know <laughs> that what. Oh yeah, but that's is. nothing. Glor like there's nothing. They'd be like, no, no, we're not. Yeah, we're those stories though didn't get shared by the masses. No. First of all, by the people who committed them, because why the fuck would you tell anybody who wasn't involved in that? Yeah, yeah. And then those stories just kind of die with the well, people it, who like committed I, them and. The they're small talk- circle Jesus Christ. Too. Yeah. yeah. Like when then, they're talking about uh, the one, uh, or Jose. Um, Batista? Uh, Jose Aldir. Or, oh. That sounds familiar, uh, yeah. The coup where he basically he shot himself in his Allende. palace. Oh, yeah, yeah. yeah. Um, whatever, uh, I forget what country that was. Um, I think it was Venezuela again. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, Jesus Christ. Um, but yeah, so like <laughs> he. Uh, Oh yeah, so the news footage they showed like an alternate angle, which showed that they they weren't being. Oh fired on. yeah, that guy on the bridge. Yeah, That's yeah. Tough. yeah. But yeah. even like the mainstream media in the U.S. was. Yeah, like this evil guy. This he went down because of these guys. Yeah. Like, they were actually protecting from themselves from snipers. Yeah. Yeah. And they that have video footage of the snipers. Part. Yeah. Yeah. If I could possibly. That was your favorite part, favorite part, you sick fuck. <laughs> Not that exact part. And that part when that guy took the bullet to the head. <laughs> oh. It's just crazy how it shows like how everything's manipulated. Yeah, yeah man. and it was it was crystal clear. Yeah, that. Like, I definitely learned that when we were in school of just like even how like news is structured on like a basic level. Sure. And you're like, yeah. oh man, this is just here. Like fuck me. What happens when like there's money involved? Yeah. Like oh fuck this. Yeah. Uh, it's, it's interesting too. Like I don't know if it's like a correlation or maybe like a parallel of it, how the West sees like terrorists and like rightfully so. Of like there's a group of people that do fucked up shit, but like you can kind of make the argument that a lot of those people are pushed because like I mean, yeah, any one of us if we had bombs dropped on us or seeing fucked up shit, you're gonna be like, well, yeah, I'm picking up a rifle. So in South America, it's like, oh, these paramilitary groups that just sell cocaine and like sell all these drugs and they're it's kind of like what the fuck else are they gonna do 
Right. Like their resources are, they're getting fucked. Like, it's not like they can go down and get a legit job that will pay. And then, like, I can do this drug shit and, like, I'll make money. Sure. And, like, they're not all just inherently violent of, like, oh, I'm just, like, yeah, every Colombian when he's 80 picks up a gun and wants to shoot people. Yeah. And so. they've been fundamentally lied to as well that they said that deals with uh, the empire of the states would yield them great uh, like social, sure. Boosts. Yeah, yeah. And they then the empire is like, "Why are you shooting at us?" And like, well, no, holy they'd have fuck, paved roads, and they would have hospitals, and yeah. like good grocery stores and good trade deals. And, and like, well, it's cheap. just so corrupt that so it doesn't happen. I saw uh, a very excellent, relevant tweet uh, the other day. Someone tweeted out saying, um, "You know, I love how Americans go in and watch Star Wars, and they root for the rebellion, and." Uh, the good guys in the movie, yeah, yet man. they don't see their own country as the empire, uh, and that this rebellion, this was it was about the Black Lives Matter mm-hmm. um, movement, mm-hmm. um, but it still makes sense here. Like mm-hmm. they don't, they still don't see that they're basically what the empire is in Star Wars, yeah, and yeah. That, <laughs> that they're forcing their I mean, will on. <laughs> do you want to look in the mirror every day and be like, ah? I gotta lose like five or ten pounds. I gotta clean up I my acne. I do that acne. every day. Oh, no. <laughs> <laughs> like nobody wants to see themselves as an ugly thing or something. Oh, dude, to I rock a sick fucking white suit like those guys, those stormtrooper dudes. What? Oh yeah, I get no. That's not what, at all what I mean. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, me too. <laughs> but like nobody, as like the American populace, would see themselves as the bad guy because then you're the fucking yeah. bad guy. Yeah. Why Has any country like ever done that? Like. Nationally, kind of looked in down. on themselves. Uh, well, Maybe I, Germany after World War II, but I think they yeah, were kind of forced to. <laughs> Good point. I, I think I don't know if it was a Monty Python skit or someone um, basically like put out a skit and like as like two Nazi soldiers talking and they're like, "Wait, are we the bad guys?" <laughs> like, oh, that was from Hogan's Heroes. Well, yeah, okay, yeah. <laughs> oh man, what a great show! Yeah, he's like, man, "Are we the baddies?" Yeah, yeah. I think we're the bad guys. <laughs> no, I don't want to be the bad guys. Yeah, yeah. No, exactly. <laughs> They yeah. don't have, they need something to give them some form of perspective. But right. at this point, that needs to be kind of an intellectual endeavor. And fundamentally, with what we were talking about earlier, that these stories are just dying with the people who committed them and the small sphere that they told, Americans won't believe it, first mm-hmm. of all, because they haven't ever heard these stories before. They've only ever heard heroic stories. And I don't really think they're that interested because their life is so fucking good most of the time. I know there's a shitload of Americans whose lives are piss poor in comparison, I guess, depending on what your metric is. But either way, um, I just don't think they're interested because life is too good still. Yeah. You can go to yeah, McDonald's man. and you can get a $2 burger and it satisfies your biological needs for those fat, salt, acid, heat shit. And it's perfect. Fuck it. Who cares? I got the burger. I didn't have to fight in a war in Venezuela or give up cheap gas to get there because yeah. these people are suffering and they have no money because I stole it. But how awesome was it to see Tucker Carlson on M- MSNBC? <laughs> I fucking hated that part. Yeah. <laughs> no, that was great. That was. Yeah. Uh, I'm so, shocked to see that he had a career back then. Terrorist. Yeah. yeah. But it's, so that propaganda fountain has been spewing its shit for the last, what, 20 years then? Uh, yeah, At I don't least, know when Tucker yeah. Carlson was like on a, a major network. Yeah, I don't know. Yeah. It's 2020 now. That was around in at least 2000. It yeah. had to have been. The parallels with the Roman Empire is just fucking wild. <laughs> you mean like, the falling aspect? Uh, yeah. And like just what you were talking about, how like there's people in the U.S. that are like, oh, this is fucking dope. Like, yeah, fuck it, this care. is cool. Their lives are too short to see the change that yeah. they would have to make sacrifices to enact. Yeah. So uh, fucking, like until like literally Rome is burning and everything is fucked or they're like, Oh yeah, maybe we should have got off our ass and done something. Why? I wonder why it's on fire. Yeah. <laughs> what, what did you do? So, oh man. So, yeah. But yeah. As you just hope, like how do you fix South America? Like just, you have to like redo deals and get, there's no way the corporations. There again. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. They'll figure it out. They have an awesome track record. That's not a bad idea. That's a terrible idea. That's yeah. a terrible idea. Ah, uh, so we just killed everyone, and uh, we're just gonna have Americans in here now. Yeah. So it's like we should like reverse Bay of Pigs them. Oh, sick! And I actually work. <laughs> yeah. yeah, 
The oh, I, again, I go back to the greatest work to me. It's like that, the gall of that like one CIA agent who just like yeah. completely oh, was like, oh, my goodness. Oh, this was this was a necessary evil. Like yeah. we needed to do this. Like it, yeah. it had to happen. Like all of a sudden, people are like happy and everything's kind of yeah. working out, and then all of a sudden, boom! Yeah. America says no. Yeah, they oh. were getting too out of hand. I like with that guy. There was. Uh, a clip shown of an old U.S. senator. I, I think he was a senator. I can't really remember his name, but he was uh, referencing bombings, I think, that were happening in Bolivia. And it was just a, a couple oh. of harmless bombings. Yes. Yeah, and, yeah, and uh, whatever. This toad-faced chinwagger was talking about, like, oh, like, no, what do you mean civilians and casualties? There was nothing. He's like, yeah. no, like, there were thousands of people that you guys killed. Yeah. He's like, you can't count. 200 at most there was 200 yeah. in the single village but even 200 like and like even hey, dude. one like, yeah <laughs> yeah i can't yeah. understand like che Guevara, like he was a symbol for this kind of shit hugo chavez like we can't say that he was assassinated but we also can so hugo chavez like one guy his death can change the world his kidnapping couldn't change at least the country yeah yeah but, man um <laughs> and I, the one part i was really confused at was the one guy there, I think he was from Venezuela, but he's like, I, you know, we had a spectacular view of the of the planes coming over. I was like, yeah, a spectacular view. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I, I mean, yeah, yeah, dropping bombs. Yeah, maybe like an awesome view. It's like I heard a, I was listening to a Malcolm Gladwell podcast, and he was talking, like, profiling this bomber squad guy from world war ii curtis lemay and like that's some shit that he would say and they're like man that's wild that this guy from the fucking 40s would say that shit yeah. but this guy was saying this like <laughs> relatively like not that long ago of like oh man it's pretty sick yeah he said yeah. we were looking at our window we had but in his defense like how cool is it when bombs are dropping that two people were like it's pretty cool but he was actually on the ground. Yeah, that's <laughs> fucked up. Okay, he's crazy. Yeah. That's like some Ginger Baker shit, like the drummer for Cream that like, grew up during the Blitz. And he's like, man, I had so much fun being a kid, running around all the rubble and all the people. And then like, wait, like people would have been on fire and yeah. like all fucked up. And you're like, tra -da -la -la -la. this yeah. is so much fun. Finding funny bones. I was Oof. God damn. Yeah. So yeah, that is crazy. Find okay. It. It's funny they didn't. The interview was wife. Like his wife, and like I was fucking shitting bricks. Like this fucking guy's crazy. Yeah. And I mean, he was one of like the the rich people who was benefiting from the U.S. Uh, backing uh, his country. Okay, he's like, I have enough yeah. money. The bombs don't hit me. I just throw hundred dollar yeah. bills at them, and they misdir <laughs> they misdirect. I wave a flag with an American president on yeah. it. Yeah. Like, oh, okay. Well, the bombs are smart enough that do. they see the flag. Yeah. And, <laughs> and the. Uh, the one time, like, they were going through, like, this one guy's mansion. And he's Holy like, oh, he's like, oh what's this? Oh, I got this from Bolivia. This is a, a silver mirror. Yeah. I got this from this. This is a... And he, he keeps showing all, like, the expensive shit. He's like, yeah, yeah you know, I think, uh, I think I'm think i going to pack it up and leave here. This country's <laughs> kind of gone to the shits. Yeah. <laughs> like, why? Like, ah, oh, the politics. And yeah. they're like, oh. They're asking yeah. us to pay tax. I don't yeah. think that what makes no sense fuck? to me. I don't understand that three-letter okay. word. And then he's like, "Yeah, we basically built uh, Miami. We we went there and, yeah. and uh, bought all their built, shit. Yeah, which I've seen countless documentaries, and they're like, cocaine built Miami. Yeah. So that guy, like, well, you obviously were involved in cocaine then. He had to have been. Oh, dude, yeah, like, yeah. I don't know. He he didn't look cool enough. <laughs> oh, no, man, not like, now. Directly or like Back somehow, then. probably his dad. Like his dad is probably some hardcore motherfucker, and he yeah. just inherited coke money. Or yeah, like you didn't have to be super cool back in the eighties uh. if you had coke and money. And if I don't know, I just I feel like you didn't have to be that cool back then. I mean, what about Operation Odessa? Those guys were not cool. Uh, I yeah. feel like the, I feel like some of them were pretty I cool. To differ, but yeah. yeah. All right. Well, if that guy, dude, cool, if you do enough drugs, like anybody's cool. Fucking Pedro then is pretty cool with his silver mirror from Bolivia. Yeah, yeah bro. It was probably made on, like, the back of slave kids. So he's like, oh, Definitely. let me tell you the story about getting this mirror. He's got rock-hard back yeah. muscles. Yeah. All that Have you ever had and... chocolate made out of tears of children? They're like, fuck, dude. Yeah. <laughs> Extra salty. <laughs> it's great. Silverware pounded out on the shoulders. I'm surprised you didn't see, like, his servants running around in the background. And they're like, don't fucking come into this room. We're filming. <laughs> yeah. If you come in here. That's why. We're chopping well, your head off. So... Talking about like, I think it was 
not Bolivia, but it was uh, one of the countries where like the indigenous people were Mayans, and basically the U.S. just came in and slaughtered them all. Like they're calling it genocide. So the U.S. was against that in World War II when Germany was doing it, but it's okay for them to do it in South America. Um, There's resources there. Yeah. Mm-hmm. So. And I, I think this is, like, a huge point that we maybe not have touched yet, but, like, it's the littlest cog in the machine, but it also makes the machine run that oil makes wars work nowadays. Cause yeah. Everything is working on oil. Like yeah, that dude. Was the, that was a huge problem for Russia. I've just started watching the untold history of the United States with Oliver Stone. Mm-hmm. Yeah, by, they had a huge Oliver problem. Stone. Yeah, and they, yeah. they couldn't afford to let those reserves go they had to get that shit up and running again or mm-hmm. not lose them in the first place yeah. because yeah. if there's no oil there's no machines mm-hmm. and there's no defense or offense right you just have hunks of steel uh, so that just reminded me of something so we're kind of like we're tripping out our men like man that's fucked up that america did this to south american countries for resources but to your point of America is doing it to themselves now because they're fracking and like how many communities in the U.S. are like you can turn a tap on and it catches on fire. Light the water on fire? Yeah, or they're just like, oh. Or um, I was listening to something and there's a report, like an official report from an oil company where they were like, listen, only one in 300 fracking incidents cause an earthquake. So it's not that big of an issue. <laughs> and like, So you're going to frack... 299 times and then leave, right? Yeah. <laughs> 300 get shaky, shaky. Or like, I don't know, maybe they, I don't, and I don't, it didn't say, I don't know, but maybe they do like a thousand of those in a day. Yeah. So then they're like, uh, what the fuck? Like this number means nothing. Yeah. We're uh, in the process of terraforming Flint, yeah. Michigan. Yeah. We just want to fucking what? shake the whole continental U.S. just apart. God, break so it, break resources, from us. <laughs> resources are that desirable and that rich that they're like, fuck it. That's fantastic. I love that idea, Tyler. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just start fracking along the border, please. <laughs> just yeah. split this goddamn thing in half. They probably apart. start with Florida. <laughs> yeah. That's fantastic. Yeah. yeah, just let Florida float off. Into the <laughs> yeah. Sea. Good. You know what? Can we give it to Cuba? Let's sell it to them. Yeah. Angle it downward. Yeah. <laughs> let Cuba just like oversee florida in its entirety they'll just they, yeah they'll like make it run into it or something Florida will be subsumed just paste it to one side you could do that it's only like 100 miles or something it's not that far uh, yeah 90 miles off yeah. the co- yeah off true. the coast of miami just frack florida right off yeah <laughs> <laughs> it's probably the plan is probably on paper somewhere that's a fantastic idea all so. of america's problems fixed with one detachment oh, yeah. man. <laughs> are like hey just stop fracking how crazy is that is but oh yeah, it's just such a insane that that is such a de- desirable resource that yeah. they're like, "Fuck it, let's let's just do it." Like we need it. I yeah. do enjoy the natural gas in my house, though. <sighs> Man, plastic is pretty tight, oh, right. but Jesus. <laughs> yeah, yeah. What the fuck do you use here? A fucking wood stove? <laughs> I use uh, Spaniards. That's <laughs> tight. That's cool. I just that's burn. Cool. I was. That's the landlord. I don't know. I guess I I guess I use the bodies of Spaniards. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah. Man, oh, speaking of Spaniards. Yeah, I was going to say. <laughs> this guy. Um, it, they mentioned a historical figure that really represents freedom and liberation in Venezuela. Simon Bolivar? Bolivar, <sighs> yeah. Dude, we were looking him up. Our Christian looked him up earlier and was like, check this guy out. Simon <gasps> Bolivar, the Damn. liberator. He was a Venezuelan native who witnessed the atrocities of Spain, and then he also was born quite affluent. His dad was a, a fairly high-positioned uh, statesman, mm-hmm. so he was a little bit more privileged. Well, he was absolutely more privileged than 90% of Venezuelans, 99% of Venezuelans. Right. So, but that didn't, uh, like, bleed into him. He kind of bled out into the rest of Venezuela with his ideas of freedom, because he took a trip to Europe to study in 1801, I believe he was 17, and while he was there, met another Venezuelan who was there on exile uh, named Simon Rodriguez. They shared a first name, so they were obviously super cool friends. Um, They started to uh, hang out more, and then Simon Rodriguez became 
uh, Simon Bolivar's mentor, and they toured around Europe. They witnessed the uh, self-proclamation of Napoleon Bonaparte III in uh, Milan, I think it was, where Damn. he declared himself king of France, Italy, and there's another one, Spain. Spain, I was going to say, maybe Spain. Spain. Yeah, um, maybe. And that also uh, was the same trip where Simon Bolivar decided to wage war against Spaniards for having taken over all of Venezuela. And this Simon Rodriguez guy was quite a learned fellow as well and uh, studied a lot of Jean-Jacques Rousseau, famous French philosopher. And so his his account of Simon Bolivar's conquest, because that's pretty much what it was, is oh, fuck yeah, it uh, was. legitimate. I think you can, you can call it an actual uh, source of, of truthful historical information. And Simon Bolivar proceeded to head back to Venezuela and became, I don't know if this is the actual chronology of it, but he was president of Venezuela. He liberated them from the Spains. And he was also the first president of Colombia. And he was uh, president of Chile and Bolivia as well. Interesting. Yeah. yeah. So, like, in South America, he's a goddamn hero. Yeah. yeah. He witnessed some atrocities that the Spanish did. I think it was in a town. And then he came up with his declaration. It was like the deck. What was it? The declaration, declaration of, of death. Yeah. Which basically was like anyone here born from Spanish descent, fucking kill him. Yeah. No, no rules. Like, just kill him. Yeah. It was Declaration of Death. Yeah, that was uh, an interesting. interesting and he would move. give resources to other leaders of uh, like rebellions or whatever to be like, hey, I'll give you ships and guns and shit, but you have to abolish slavery of any Spanish colony or any Spanish territory that you take over. So they're like, all right, cool. I think he was also pretty tight partners with the uh, leader of Haiti who enacted their slave revolt. Yeah, I think it was around the same time. Um, someone, uh, something Patron. Which, Haiti's the only country that had a successful slave rebellion. And they yeah. killed I can't all say that that the was French dudes. Like, because of Simon Bolivar, but Simon Bolivar definitely, Simone Bolivar definitely references the, uh, that the liberator of Haiti as um, inspiration. Yeah, because there's some famous quote where someone was talking to him and was like, oh, you've done some cool shit. And he's like, nah, this guy did cool shit. And that's what Christian and I were saying. I was like, oh, man, the guy's such a humble guy. Yeah. Like, he did all this yeah. wild shit and, like, traveled, like, twice as much or three times as much distance than Napoleon. Yeah. And on like, horseback. Uh, yeah. All of our guys traveled more than 70,000 kilometers in his conquest of liberation in south america northern south america yeah and it just put in context of like european sure conquerors yeah, yeah so and like alexander like, oh, the great fuck. he rode twice as far as alexander the great yeah it was like three three times as far ten times as far as hannibal yeah uh, the conqueror well he had he had he had elephants man so i mean he had to go a little <laughs> slow <laughs> yeah fair he's enough not, he's not making them run he should have got them up on those big circus balls and then just like a unicycle. Oh, yeah. that would have been sick. Doodled across the mm -hmm. landscape. Dude. Atop a giant ball. That'd be wicked. Yeah, no, but Doodle yeah, so Simon Doodle Bolivar Doodle. is definitely uh, a hero in South America. And that was part of Fucking uh, Hugo Chavez's regime change was yeah. he wanted to get back to Bolivarian uh, politics. And that was his socialist Bolivarianism. Yeah, so I know I had heard the name before watching this doc. Cool. Did not yeah, know, I missed the did name. Did not know too much about him. No, I mean, same. I missed the name. And Christian was like, dude, check this guy out. And we were yeah. like, holy shit. Simon uh, Rodriguez, his mentor, is now on the $20 bill, I think, in Venezuela. Nice. Yeah. Cool. So he's, we could he's, probably uh, get that for like cents on the dollar. <laughs> <laughs> we could probably pick yeah. a $20 Venezuelan bill up for like five cents. Fuck, we should get one. Cheaper to get that than toilet paper a couple of months ago. That's true. That's fucked up. That's really sad. That's what's also sad about this documentary is they profile like, oh, all these countries are fucked up, but Venezuela is pretty good. And it was like just before shit really hit the fan. Because this was what, 2017? I think it was, no, it was no, 2007. 2007? Okay. Yeah. So a and then few Chavez years. Chavez died in 2013. And it's been fucking right. downhill since then. Yeah. Well, he, he named his successor. It was Niccolo... 
uh, Maduro. Maduro. I think his name is Niccolo Nicholas. Nicholas Nicholas Maduro. Nicholas Maduro. Right. And so, Juan, Niccolo Juan, for his mother. Yeah, Juan Guido. Guido, not Guano. <laughs> Definitely not Guano. Although, fucking Guano. Fuck you, Juan Guano. So. Hey man, he's the rightful heir. He took the sword out of the stone. Oh, did he? I don't know. I don't know what the fuck his claim the is, but I mean, America if the president, the UK's hands, if the president is like, "Hey, you're going to be in charge now," and he dies, I think he'd be like, "Yeah, that guy's in charge now," because the guy in charge said so. That's exactly what happened. Yeah, but that's not Juan Guardo. No, I know. Gueno. That's why no, no, no bueno. Is <laughs> no bueno. Uh, no. <laughs> I don't know how you actually pronounce it. it was Guido. Guido. Okay, Juan Guido. So, but. Juan- Juan He's, Gerardo uh, Guido Marquez. Is okay. that like six people, or what the fuck just happened there? No, just one guy. Oh, Juan okay. Guido. His name's Juan Guido for now on. Juan Juan. Juan Juan. Juan Juan the Swan. He has only Juan name. Guido. It, it is Juan. <laughs> but yeah, that's crazy. That he probably just has enough power and enough money that he's like, now nah, I want to be fucking president. And they're like, no, dude, yeah. No way. So he or has like, been recognized by, I think, 60 countries internationally. What the fuck? What? Yeah, including the UK and the US. I don't Wait, know. Wait, what? what the, so they, the, those countries just have like weird evidence on them or weird pictures or something? No, I don't. Oh, they're just backing think him? So I think they're backing him because he is a part of the classic Venezuelan opposition, which yeah. is to not have reform and to keep oil a little fucking cheaper oh, that and makes he sense. is two years older than i am what yeah Fuck, get your life together bro <laughs> you could Born be you 19, could be like a proto dictator a puppet for the u.s in 1983 he is a former member of the social democratic Pop- popular will party popular will he is a federal deputy to the national assembly representing the state of vargas Oh, good old Vargas. Uh, on January 23rd, 19 or 2019, uh, Guido and the National Assembly declared he was acting president of Venezuela. I say no bueno. Starting the Venezuela, Venezuelan presidential crisis by challenging Nicolas uh, Maduro's presidency. Oh, sick. I mean, it seems like he only just kind of crashed the political just back system. In, just so. back in January. Oh, well, good for him. That's fucked up. That's crazy. It says assumed office January fifth, damn twenty nineteen. Twenty nineteen. Wow. Fuck. Oh, so that was. But you know what though? Over a year ago. You want to know what though? Year and a half. He, like, all right, you can run this shit, and then Corona hits. What do you think? You think he had a? Well, it was a year and a half. A, so, a year before Corona hit. Well, so yeah. let's talk about that a little bit because there's currently Venezuelan-owned gold bullion in a UK bank, and like twenty hours ago. There was a court ruling put down by a Supreme Court justice in England, Wales, okay. to say that the money, that gold bullion, is not going to be released to either what the of fuck? the leaders. But yeah, so as it stands, Nicolas Maduro has requested for this money to be released to help in COVID-19 aid. Yes. Juan Guaido has thrown up his ticket and said as acting president self-appointed i decline that request for the money holy fuck (laughs) maybe they're the bad guys (laughs) who the fuck is a president with money and says i know i have it i recognize it and i don't want it strictly for political reasons because your opponent says maybe we should spend this money on helping our citizens yeah you like do you think you think he's suffering like his house probably fucking gold everything yeah, exactly, because he's U.S. funded and fuck apparently me. U.K. funded as well. Yeah, dude. Which is really How fucked the fuck? Up. That's so fucked up that the U.K. has the power to be like, nah, you can't get this money. Yeah, be like, okay, we're just going to come over and get it then. Was it a shipping issue or are you yeah. guys busy? Yeah. I can just come over. Or like if one of those Venezuelan fuck guys him. is like, man, we can just train this kick-ass hit team and go <laughs> get this money. And then the U.K. would be like, it was a terrorist act. It's oh, awesome. my God. That's fantastic. Not that I want to insinuate this in any way, shape, No, neither form. do I, but that would be no, like some dope this next ass. part, there's uh, an Iranian grocery store for chain that just opened up in venezuela the main city caracas okay and that's obviously a problem yeah because venezuela has had 
uh, essentially embargoes placed on it mm -hmm. or its uh, aid because of this presidential crisis. Mm -hmm. And Iran does not give a fuck about U.S. sanctions. Absolutely not. So, yeah, they're going to open up a grocery store and it just opened up yesterday. And it's great. It's loaded with Iranian shit. But, I mean, it's food. And it's really cheap. And it's well organized. So what do they just have, like, nuclear stuff? Or I like think it's all irradiated, probably. But no, I can't say that. <laughs> no, but like, that's a great move. Because if, like, the it's classically if the enemy yeah, is... Yeah, dude, that's... The enemy of my friend. Yeah. In the, something the like enemy that. of my enemy is my friend. Yeah, thank you. I was fucking up there. Amen, brother. <laughs> but that's, in this doc, like, that's literally what the U.S. is fearing that they're like well yeah. we got to do it because someone else is going to do it yeah exactly and, and then they, you get iran and like yeah we got nukes and like we don't give a fuck yeah like we honestly are only helping venezuela <laughs> as iranians because fuck you america you yeah. can't do that yeah. to people those are people of the earth just like we are and you do that to us we're gonna step up now yeah i guess it would be the backing like the backing of having a nuclear yeah or two yeah but man oh man so well, like, there's a lot of and shit like oh you got oil money? money like we got oil money too like don't exactly. don't worry about that <laughs> like it's kind of somehow politically not equal footing but Damn. everyone's fingers over the button but no one has the balls to do it except iran what's the grocery <laughs> store called uh mesigasis megasis i think cool megu megusasis something like that. megasasis that's tight something like that cool but it's fine yeah. Like showing how in this document how like the CIA kind of um, interferes with everything. Like they've been known to like yeah. prop up some car like drug cartels to take out other ones. Absolutely, man. Like, they've absolutely. invented drug cartels. Yeah. Absolutely, yeah, yeah. Well, like even with like the Barry Seal shit and like the Contras, where like the CIA went to Congress and was like, we need money to fight these counter terrorists and congress was like no that's a bad look and like we can't really do this and then the cia is like all right so uh we're just gonna like yeah we're gonna fund certain cartels and help them and then get their money and then like we'll just hire this fucking pilot we'll make our own money yeah, yeah that's an amazing story too, and oh, dude it's fucking crazy and like he was dropping shit off in arkansas and at the time the governor of Arkansas was Bill Clinton. So the CIA <laughs> just looked for a guy that was like, what state is there a governor that'll play ball with us? And they're like, oh, we got this fucking guy. <laughs> like, he's just sitting here in Arkansas playing his fucking saxophone. It's the president-elect. <laughs> like, what's yeah. up, dude? So, yeah, and then Barry Seal gets, uh, like, crashes or gets caught, and then he's on his way to court. Or I think he was on his way to court or something. And then, yeah, obviously didn't make it to court. Because he was going to be like, yeah, here's uh, my receipts from the CIA. And um, I was dropping them off in Nebraska. And, like, this is why. Because of this and this. And they're like, no fucking way. We're shutting that down. And then it's like, oh, there was this rogue CIA guy. Or, like, he wasn't even in the CIA. He, like, thought he was in the CIA. So they just, like, distanced themselves so much. And they're like, no, we're not involved. Yeah. Again. That was the, the dirtiest part about this doc that I remember. Yeah. Was the uh, agent, so the organizer, he's referred to as by that uh, Venezuelan journalist who was covering the protests that were supposed to be kept separate that yeah. day. Can't remember what day that was. Um, and this one guy comes in. He's like, "Oh, like we're gonna go, we're gonna go this way with the the march now." And they're like, "No, like we're organized to go this way. We want to go this way." And yeah. He's like, "I'm in charge here. We're going this way." And he has the police behind him because they're in on it, of course. Mm -hmm. And it happens. And like, it's just, it's that one little joint switch where you go right. it's the railroad track switch where you change track and it's just yeah. from there you're miles apart you're miles from where you should have been it's, but it's just little moves yeah like that right Fucking crazy politics is fucked up man because it's just such little things that have such like a fucking stone in a pond and then the ripple out effects they're just like oh man we are fucked and like we have gone down a road so far that we can't turn back or like like what the fuck do we do it um reminds me of the french revolution i've been working through a, a textbook about western civilization from the 1400s up and we're at the french revolution now and it's uh it's eerily similar how well let's South hope American they don't politics start are going cutting people's heads off yeah Hopefully, maybe in the next 75 years, we'll have uh, 
another French Revolution with the fall of American society. Oh, they have like sick laser guillotines. They That'd like upgrade sweet. the guillotine for sure. sure. Yeah. Yeah. You're Pretty about cool. to die. <laughs> like a lightsaber, you just you think it's going to be like a retina scanner yeah. in both eyes, but it's like <laughs> it's just lightsaber. <laughs> Hello, Christian. You're about to die. Yeah. Some 1984 shit. Nah, they don't do that. In America loves you. <laughs> they just beat you into believing that you like your. Hey, government. they're called re-education centers, bro. <laughs> Get it right. <laughs> uh, we got to watch a jock on China something or other soon. Oh, Jesus Christ. We're going to miss the opportunity to make some sweet-ass, tasty jokes. Oh, precious. Yeah, pretty soon they're going to be owning us, so. Yeah, we got to get that shit out there now. Yeah. I've already sold out. <laughs> same. Same. No, Tyler. Same. I got a Wii Wa, so. Oh, fuck. Wait, do you have a Huawei? No. Okay. I, no. He just, uh, 10% of his income goes to the Chinese <laughs> <Yeah>. Communist Party. <laughs> I am an operative. Yeah, so dude. Fighter. Speaking of operative, um, there was a case or a news story recently where some chick that was high, high in the CIA oh. was a, was a Cuban operative. Oh yeah. Yeah. That's exciting. Yeah, dude. And it was like this little old, just like lady that I think was just an office lady, but was privy to meetings and shit. And then like it was like no no it's it's like that's not the mole like there's no way this is her and she was there for like fucking years. And then just feed an information to Fidel. That's wild. Like, oh, that's that's wicked. They put that her in the wrong country. He just wanted to know how his son was doing. <laughs> Maybe. And yeah. we're back full circle. Yeah. <laughs> oh, Maybe. That's such a great theory. They do really do look alike, though. <laughs> huh. It makes sense, man. Maybe. I think so. I mean, the story goes that she was trying to have a baby, and it just wasn't happening. And then they had a vacation down in Cuba, and she Cuba. comes back. She's like, ah. Somehow, uh, maybe that was warmer and my womb was too cold. Or some revolution, shit. revolution, she revolution. Had, she had chili kidneys, so she warmed up down there a little. Oh, and chili kidneys. <laughs> Good one. Not Chilean kidneys. Oh, okay. Cuban kidneys. But yeah, South America definitely seems like a really interesting place to go to. I mean, like visually, it looks really cool. So like I was saying with like just the mountains and stuff, but like... I don't know if you could go there in like a bubble or some like this documentary paints a pretty crazy picture of everything, but I'm sure there's pockets and places that are really cool mm -hmm. and pretty safe. It would be a real tough go, I think. Yeah. Because their attitude is so anti-capitalist. Yeah. Like they're right. so ingrained into wanting socialism. I think that to go there as a tourist is like you're kind of asking for it. Yeah, I, don't I mean, know. like I don't know. Nicaragua, like I know a lot of people. It's uh, like a big tourist uh, spot now. El Salvador, uh, Costa Rica. Mm, I wonder if those are U.S. based companies. Uh, no, uh, no. Like, uh, there's a lot of Spanish, a lot of uh, like. Uh, They're back. <laughs> yeah. They never left, yeah. bro. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, like I know, like most resorts, a lot of resorts are owned by uh, Spanish companies. Oh yeah, mm -hmm. huh. Cool. I thought they would have been American companies. Yeah, uh, Bahia Principe, I think it's Spanish. The uh, fuck did you just say? Bahia Principe. Yeah. Bahia Principe. Cool. Yeah. Do Americans um, no leave like seed pods for their people when they take shits in places? Yeah. Is it like squirrels with maple trees? <laughs> yeah, they know. They have like little cash spots. Well, because I'm pretty sure that's how the Spanish do it, but like I didn't know. They call out. You can because the Americans are so are so Spanish now. That's just kind of their history. They don't have like shit people seed pods? Maybe. I have no idea. That's probably a <laughs> branch just, of the government. It's curious how they get so many different places in the world. They have to just leave like dormant capsules of American genes and they just soda. spawn. They don't they're not babies. They just spawn as full humans. Yeah, they just it's Left behind in the feces of American tourists <laughs> or soldiers, and then when it's moist enough, and the former World War II army bases, <laughs> yeah. they just jump out. The political spectrum and uh, temperature is rising in a particular country with oil. They just they sprout right out of the ground, and then yeah. they have agents on the ground. There's too much freedom here. We must, yeah, we, we must come about. They're like locusts. If it's like just certain temperature change, shit exactly. hits the fan. Yeah, they hear the vibrations of protesting Fuck, footsteps in the ground, and yeah. miles and miles away, they just pop up, up like orcs. The tears have stopped. We must come up. 
<laughs> it is time to make more tears. Wow. Yeah, it is. It's crazy. It it's is. also pretty interesting with like how America acts in the world. And then like, what the fuck's the point of the UN then? Of like how they're supposed to like, oh, we're here to like make sure all countries in the world is cool. And like if any legal thing happens, like we go through us. Right. But like the head of the UN, like the buildings in New York City. So like the UN would be like, <laughs> hey, America, fuck you guys. Maybe that um, toad man from the CIA was onto something. Amnesty International is right in the middle of it. Yeah. Oh, right that's in the right. Those sons of bitches. The UN is pulling the strings. They're the puppeteers, man. That mm -hmm. makes sense. Okay. Yeah. It's from okay. the top down. Everyone. Yeah. Okay. Maybe. I don't know. I believe that CIA guy. <laughs> <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, I was it's only 200. I was leafing through uh, a book earlier and I found a couple of quotes that I think really uh, capture American uh, sentiments about um, themselves. But I don't think they quite realize this. Um, this, uh, this guy, his, his quote is about war, but... I think in general, it just speaks to violence and I think it really can apply to American people. Um, people told us that the war was over. That made us laugh. We ourselves are the war. Its flame burns strongly in us. It envelops our whole being and fascinates us with the enticing urge to destroy. We marched on to the battlefields of the post-war world just as we had gone into battle on the Western Front singing, reckless, and filled with the joy of adventure as we marched on to the attack, silent, deadly, and remorseless in battle. And I think that that's kind of true for Americans because they're just, they're living the high life and... The Miller high life. Yeah, <laughs> they're, they're living the Miller <laughs> high life. And uh, it really does invigorate them. Like that's that's what their movies are about. That's what their TV shows are about. It's what their fucking news is about. That's a shocking twist of the last 35, 40 years of their news. Right. They they broadcast war, which is really bizarre. Like there's there's few details that I can really cite of uh, similarities between societies now and something like 1984, like a fictional worst case scenario. But that's one of them, is constant, constant news updates on your phone, on your computer, on your TV, in the subway. Like, there's TVs now, like, yeah. literally everywhere. Mm -hmm. There's just these, like, washes of news. And it's always fucking famine, death, war, <laughs> pillage. Right. Hey, man, at the end of it, they'll talk about, like, baby puppies, so... To leave you on a highlight. Yeah, yeah I suppose. Keep your shit together. Like, early in the morning, I guess, like... <laughs> Good Morning America, they talk about puppies and yeah. puppy shit. Cat shit sometimes. Yeah, but the whole system's fucked up. It's concerning too, though. But Yeah, like, how do you rewrite do you something like, yeah. we, like, remake democracy or, like, some new form of something? I genuinely think it comes down to education. Yeah, that's true. And I think we're kind of seeing it, something like Black Lives Matter. It existed mm -hmm. like in the 60s, <laughs> basically, on mm -hmm. a, a far different um, a hue of the spectrum. But I think it was more or less the same thing. Yeah. But with mm -hmm. the age of the internet and with just how cheap all that stuff is, it's almost yeah. like a human right now in a lot right, of places. Yeah. It's, uh, it's either going to go one way or the other, but really, really strongly one way or the other. Yeah. It's going to be liberating or it's going to be the thing that we accidentally crush ourselves with. We don't even see it coming. So, the, the war on democracy. It was a good one. Good. Yeah. It's also funny, I think I was looking up um, on, uh, it was Wikipedia, and they were saying that the, criti the criticism to this was that it seeds anti-American doubt. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, I can see that. And they're like, oh, shit. I wonder if that was an American-based uh, review. Oh. Probably. If, yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if not, they got their check from an American-based something. Maybe it was from a, a UK magazine or something. No, I don't know. Maybe. Because <laughs> they're obviously playing a weird game 
with uh, some other powers that be. Yeah. I don't want that idea of like passing power down from a pointee to a pointee. Like when Chavez died, he gave it to Maduro. Maybe that was the right thing to do. Maybe that was the wrong thing to do because uh, Chavez was in power for like 14 years, which is a long time, but 13 out of 14 of those elections, because I think they had one almost every year, he unanimously won, or at least uh, right. won by large amounts. And then he handed it down to like his, his right-hand guy at the time. I don't know that I would be too happy with that, but on the other hand, it's not up to me, and it's not up to the States either. So for someone like the UK or the United States to step in and be like, ah, this guy's kind of starting to change. Well, yeah, like yeah, and we need to say, replace him. Say President Trump was to have a heart attack and die, Pence would automatically become president until, until the election. Until he held another election. Yeah. yeah, yeah, yeah. But I guess I just I just don't know if that's exactly how Venezuelans. Right. Yeah, like if he's president for thirteen years, themselves. they're not doing the like four years. Term. No, but yeah, maybe there's. But it's just weird to us of like that's what it's like. Oh yeah, he was in there for like the maximum you could do is like eight years. Or like with Canada, like Canada, there's no limit. Like we have elections every oh, yeah, five that's years. True. But I think Gretchen, I think he was in 13 years. Really? Something like that. Yeah. Close to it. Okay. Yeah. So you could. if you keep voting in. Term. All right. Yeah. Wow. Fuck, that that rarely a goddamn happens, dictatorship. <laughs> yeah, I think Jean Gretchen was in. Cool. Well, ain't that something? He yeah. was. Cool. Venezuelans also have constituted themselves as having one of the best polls, uh, like not poll experiences, but um, like to go to the polls and then to collect the votes. And their their whole election system is one of the finest in the world. Oh shit! No way. Sorry, he, he was making like a little party or he something. Was prime minister for ten years, ninety three to two thousand three. Jesus. Okay. Killing the game. I did not realize that. I kind of thought we were running on a like a two-term system as well. Nope. Yeah. And that hasn't been reformed either? No. Nope. No. Oh, wow. Oh, yeah. I guess so that makes sense because Stephen Harper ran. Yeah, that's the he name was I was quite, thinking. He was in, he was in, he was in twice, time. and then he also ran this. So he tried to run this most recent time. Mm-hmm. So he was in for 10 then, right, if he was in for two? Because you said it's five-year terms? I believe. It's funny how we don't even know. I thought it was four years, but... So did I. Uh, it can't, but it can be sooner. Like if it's a, mi- a minority oh, okay. government, uh, yeah. they can force a, an election. Oh, yeah, because there was that lady that was prime minister, right, for like a week or something? Yeah, Christina something. Kim Campbell? Kim Campbell. Oh, Kim Campbell, right, not Christina. Um, See, get your Canadian politics right, bro. Come on. Yeah, Harper was in, in office for nine years. Harper's Bazaar? That's cool. 2006 to 2015. And 2015 was because it was a minority government, and they called it. Why was it four years instead of another five? Yeah, yeah it could have been, yeah. yeah, minority yeah, government. Lost. It was and called an election. election. Get cool. the fuck out That's of nice here. Change. Get out of here. Whose turn is it to uh, select this week? I definitely chose this one, so not me. Bitch can give her a go. Give her a bowl shake. La, 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 la. We should just find, like, a random... Documentary generator online. Okay. And uh, and I think we might have to just make one. We have a physical copy of that here. Once we go through all these. Okay. Almost holy. Almost holy. I don't know. We'll get Tyler to look that up. I'm guessing it's about religion. Is this one of those dark black ones? Yeah. Cool. Okay. It could be a legit one. Not in content, not in... Yeah, I was going to say, what do you mean? Like a dark comedy? <laughs> not in atmosphere or theme. I probably will be, because it sounds like it could be not painting religion in the most holy of lights. Yeah, well, that was it? about the ink on the page. Pastor... Oh, I don't like that. You just said one word, and it's already going to be fucking weird. Jenna Dilly Mokanenko... <laughs> likes to dilly-dilly. <laughs> ...takes homeless, drug-addicted children off the streets of... Oh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Mariupol, <laughs> Ukraine. Damn, <laughs> shit, I'm sorry. <laughs> this is going to be crazy. Yeah, basically it's a documentary about... I've done the heroin since I was a six. You should call it Mostly Holy. Yeah. He calls himself... Old pa- dead. Calls himself Pastor Crocodile. Because oh they do a- crocodile, uh, that crazy drug. He's yeah. known throughout the Ukraine. I eat, I eat the children. 
He's known throughout the Ukraine for his years of working to rehabilitate drug addicted ch- kids. Fuck. But he's man, also a vigilante oh, wh- who whoa. uses any force necessary to carry out his moral vision. <gasps> Dude, he's like Black, Black Snake Moan. That's awesome. What? Genity believes Genitalia. he is. He has made Maripol a great, a better place, but now the violence in Ukraine threatens everything. I beat, <laughs> yeah, the fucking I Russians. So well. I beat these kids and get them off of heroin, and the fucking Russians come. So the <laughs> the review on IMDb gives it an eight star. This so is good. intense. It says powerful, inspiring subject, badly shot and edited. Oh no! When did this uh, come out? Twenty fifteen. Okay. Yeah, that was like just before. Shit was popping off in the Ukraine, right? I it was like so, 16, 17. So, yeah. We will uh, learn about the... Oh, fuck. Drug pastor, addicted kids. The pastor crocodile uh, next week. Chomp, chomp, baby. Vigilante priest. Okay. <laughs> That's sick. I'm Thanks so for excited. listening, guys. And uh, yeah, we'll be back next uh, next week with this almost holy. Almost holy, holy. holy.